Welcome to the virtual presentation Fast Linear Programming through Transposition Computing. In the following 15 minutes, we investigate how to accelerate the mathematical foundations of polyhedral compilation. Let me start with a concrete example that motivates the need for constraint solving in compilers. On the slide, we see a piece of code. I now invite you to think for a moment about the computational complexity of that code. Most trained computer scientists understand computational complexity intuitively. But what about the memory access cost of this code? Or the benefits of optimizations such as tiling? The answer is less clear. Memory access behavior is today critical for the performance of a program. Consequently, memory-aware programming is central for programmer productivity. While classical cache simulators contribute to this awareness, we've seen over the last years that analytical models based on constraint programming, can give results a lot faster. Meaning programmers can get results in seconds instead of hours. While seconds are great, many use cases for constraint programming would benefit immensely from even faster constraint libraries. Hence, understanding and accelerating the very foundations of such libraries is critical. Let me now take you from the world of imperative programs directly into the world of mathematical representations. Over 30 years ago, Paul Fautrier introduced the so-called polyhedral model. The polyhedral model uses affine constraints to reason about imperative programs and explains precisely how integer sets relate to programs. I invite you to learn more about this relationship in our paper. In this talk, we will directly focus on understanding integer sets. An integer set lives in a multidimensional vector space, in our example, in a two-dimensional space. An integer set can be unconstrained and consequently contains all integer points in this vector space. However, typically, we use integer sets to model constraint spaces, where the precise boundaries are specified through a set of affine constraints. On our slide, we introduce, for example, two constraints to limit the range of x and two constraints to limit the range of y. Together, they clearly mark the set of nine integer points that are an element of the set S. When analyzing a program, we perform different operations on integer sets. Typical operations are intersection and union, calculating the difference of two sets, or the complement of a single set. Other operations are emptiness checks, or finding a single sample value out of all the points in an integer set. We can normally compute these operations rather quickly, but any given program analysis will run a lot of these operations on many different integer sets. Hence, being able to perform these operations fast is important. Before we can accelerate arithmetic over integer sets, we first need to understand how a modern integer set library is structured. At the highest level of such a library, we compute complements, subtractions, intersections, and various other user-facing operations. These operations are typically implemented in terms of more abstract mathematical algorithms, such as parametric integer programming, general basis reduction, coalescing, or just the detection of redundant constraints. All of these core algorithms use at their very foundation an algorithm called simplex. In this work, we aim to accelerate the implementation of such a simplex solver. At a very abstract level, the simplex algorithm solves an optimization problem where a linear objective function is minimized while ensuring that a set of linear constraints are satisfied. Simplex solvers typically start by identifying a valid solution that lies on a vertex of the polytope that bounds the valid solutions. The solver then jumps in so-called pivot steps from vertex to vertex, always improving the objective function, until it reaches a vertex where no further improvement is possible. This vertex corresponds to the solution vector that minimizes the objective function. While there are many ways to implement a simplex solver, the most classical implementation uses a simplex tableau, a two-dimensional matrix where columns correspond to variables and rows correspond to constraints. Each pivot is implemented as a scan over this matrix, where all the coefficients are updated according to the rules that you see on the slide. In the most simple case, this scan is just a two-dimensional loop, where the outer loop iterates over all rows and the inner loop iterates over all coefficients. If we can get this and a couple of other loops fast, we can accelerate our simplex solver. 
Simplex solvers are today already heavily tuned, so our objective is not tuning a general purpose simplex solver. Instead, we look at the very specific characteristics of simplex problems in compilers and exploit these properties to create a solver that is fast for the use case we care about. For this, we identify three state-of-the-art compilers that use polyl modeling. The first is Poly, a polyl loop nest optimizer for LLVM. The second is PPCG, a polyl compiler that translates sequential C programs into fast CUDA code. Finally, there's Haystack, the analytical cache model that we already use to motivate this work. We run all three compilers and obtained almost half a million simplex tableaus. Let's now analyze these simplex tableaus. We first look at the number of bits across the individual coefficients. In program analysis, coefficients can become almost arbitrarily large. We can see coefficients with up to 127 bits in our analysis. However, we also observe that more than 99% of the coefficients require less than 9 bits. Hence, we typically have small values. Now let's look at how many dimensions a simplex tableau typically has. We see that all our problems use less than 28 dimensions and we observe a median dimensionality of only 18 columns. Hence, the tableaus have typically low dimensionality. Finally, let's look at sparsity. Again, across all tableaus, we see that our median sparsity is 84%, so our tableaus have high sparsity. Now, can we exploit these properties to tailor a simplex solver for compilation? Our solution is to design a fast simplex solver around a technique called transposition computing. Transposition computing enables us to exploit the typical small values of coefficients while still allowing us to reason about constraint systems with very large coefficients. The key idea is that the matrix data type representing the tableau and the simplex algorithm itself are implemented using C++ templates, so that, such that the data types of the code can become template parameters. As a result, we can instantiate multiple versions of the same code. A number of fast variants that use small integer types as well as variants that use big integer libraries to support integer values that require more bits than supported natively. Each transposition matrix keeps track of the data type that is used to represent the coefficients in the current tableau. Whenever we perform a computation on the tableau, a transposition dispatcher checks the current precision and calls a specialized simplex instance for this precision, for example, for 16-bit. All operations are performed on 16-bit as long as no integer overflow arises. In case an overflow arises, we detect this overflow, expand the data types in the tableau and rerun the algorithm. This setup allows us to use fast native integers for the common case while falling back to arbitrary precision integers as needed. We also use transposition computing to exploit the low dimensionality of the simplex tableaus. In particular, we do not just specialize for the size of the integers, but also for the number of dimensions a given matrix has. As the number of dimensions is typically small, we can use modern vector instruction sets to compute each row-wise operation with a couple of vector instructions instead of a sequential loop over all coefficients. To use vector instructions, we automatically generate vectorized overflow checks. As visible in this figure, this works best when we use an element type with 16-bit, as ABX512 provides instructions to compute both the high bits of a multiplication as well as a saturated add. For larger integer types, the calculation of overflow checks is possible, but becomes increasingly costly. Hence, transmission computing is crucial to run as often as possible in 16-bit. We also introduce algorithmic optimizations to keep values small. Each pivot step may increase the values of coefficients, but often these new coefficients may be scaled by the same constant factor. We identify the shared scaling factor by computing the GCD of all coefficients and remove it by dividing all coefficients by our GCD. This helps to keep the coefficients small and allows us to use more often the faster, low bit width variant of our simplex solver. Unfortunately, computing a GCD is slow. The classical approach would sequentially compute the GCD using expensive modulo and division operations. We now introduce what we call the prime GCD algorithm. An algorithm that is specialized for small coefficients and allows us to efficiently use fast parallel vector instructions. 
Instead of storing coefficients in two's complement representation, each number is represented by a bit vector, where each bit represents a prime factor. For example, the number 6 is represented as bit vector, indicating a prime factorization of 2 times 3. Computing a GCD in the prime factor base is fast. It requires a simple bitwise Boolean AND over all operands. To run it on a vector of coefficients, we translate the vector into prime base using a lookup into a pre-computed table, perform a fast horizontal vector AND, and divide using a simple XOR. As a result, we replace a costly sequence of divisions with a couple of fully parallel vector operations. We also explore the third property we observed, sparsity. And I invite you to read about our new small sparsity format in our paper. Now let's see if our work actually improves performance. For this, we look into two parts. First, we check the actual core simplex pivo loop. If we compare 16, 32 and 64 bit native operations with GMP's arbitrary precision arithmetic, we observe a huge benefit only by using fixed size computations. We also observe that the use of 16 or 32 bit vector instructions scales well. If we have more columns, we get very notable speedups. For 64 bit, that's not the case because again, overflow checking is expensive. Our prime factor GCD is also fast. If we compare the runtime of the unoptimized code at the top and the optimized code at the bottom, we see that we move from around 60 cycles down to around 15 cycles by normalizing a constraint. In combination, we see an order of magnitude speedup both when running hot and cold caches. While these speedups are impressive, we only optimized a very small part of the algorithm. The question is now, does this translate to higher level operations? In this work, we only picked a single high-level operation, Coalesc, and ported it to our fast simplex solver. We then extracted 25,000 test cases from Poly, PPCG, and Haystack. The Coalesc operation with all optimizations plotted in dark green shows from 0.5x to 10x speedup. Combined, this is a 3.2x mean speedup over GMP. We also observe for the sum of all the execution times a 6.7x difference between our approach and GMP. While the sum of execution times metric is atypical, it is an interesting metric for compilation tasks where the longest running task typically dominates compile time. Let's conclude. We analyzed the characteristics of simplex tableaus, typical to polyl compilation, and found matrices to have small coefficients, low dimensionality, and high sparsity. We then exploited these properties by implementing a transposition simplex solver where we vectorized the central pivo loop. Our evaluation shows that this gives us both a fast simplex as well as a fast coalesc operation. While we believe that our work is a big step forward, we take only a very first step. It's an open question if other operations would benefit, and it's also unclear if the data structure transposition arithmetic we propose scales to full polyl compilers. We would be excited to see future work towards high-performance integer set arithmetic for compilers being built on top of our work.